so we're pretty much getting to the end as for the basics of building our platformer game. But it's a little boring to play without any sound or music. So that's what we're going to be focusing on in this video. So if we want to add music to the game, it's as simple as right clicking in our gameplay scene, creating a empty object. I'll call this music, I suppose. Add a component and we're going to be looking for a audio source, not sound, audio source. And for music, we would want play on awake to be checked here. Generally, you would also loop the music if it's in a scene like this, just playing one loop over and over again. And so we need to select an audio clip. So to find our audio, let's go to assets audio, which we downloaded at the start. And we'll go to music 10 bit battle. Uh, let's see assets for unity. So you can see in here we have two assets here, the intro and the loop. So Let's try just testing with the intro. I'll, dra I'll drop that into here. Okay, so now we can go ahead and hit play and see the intro part. Now, generally, music wouldn't be separated into two parts like this, but we can make a workaround pretty easily so that after the intro is played, we switch to the loop part of the music and continue playing that over and over again until we exit the scene. So to do that on our music game object, I'm going to add a new component. I will call this music player which will be a new script, we'll create an ad. So let's make sure all of our scripts are in the scripts folder. I'll go to assets and let's take flying eye and music player and I'll move it into scripts. So now back on the music object, let's click edit script for the music player. So our music player is going to play the intro music followed by the loop music when the intro is done. The simplest way to set this up is going to be to have two audio sources, one set up with the intro which is going to be played when the script starts. And then the second audio source will have the loop, which will already be set to loop. And we'll play that when the intro is done. So I'm going to have two audio sources, public audio source. And we'll say intro source and loop source, I suppose. So then we need two lines in the start method, which is going to be intro source dot play. So when the music player starts, our intro source is going to start playing. And then for the loop source, we want to queue up the playing. So we want to use play scheduled. And this is going to require how long we're going to wait in order to start playing the loop source. So we want to start with audio settings dot DSP time. So that's the current time in terms of the audio system components. And then we want to add the length of the intro sources clip. So that's going to be intro source dot clip dot length. And the length is measured in time since we're talking about audio. So we tell the loop source to start playing, taking the current time and adding the end of the clip length to it. So these should sync up when this is done playing. This one's going to start playing. So back in our Unity editor, you can see we need two audio sources. I'll drag this intro source into the intro here. And then let's add component audio source. So the second audio source is not going to play on awake, but it is going to loop. Let's go into audio music uh, 10 battle one assets for unity. So we need the loop. Let's go to the object here and drag the loop into the bottom audio source. So loop bottom audio source. OK, it's there. Now, uh, the one on top is set to play on awake. So I am going to turn that off for right now and make it so that the music player script is going to be responsible for playing this audio source. The last thing we need to do is drag the loop source into the loop source slot. OK, so now we should have this set up. Let's go ahead and test it. So we just need to let the music play for like 10 seconds and see if it keeps looping with the loop audio source. So let's hit play. Music starts with the intro. So that's great that we have the music, but now we want to add sound effects that occur when our animations happen. So when a knight takes damage or our player swings the sword or one of the characters die, we want to play certain sound effects. So what would be a good way to do that? Well, the way I like to is to go into the animators of our characters and then we will create a new state behavior. So the thing about state behaviors that makes it so great is that we can have something like a sound effect play when we reach an animation state. So when the player gets hit or the player dies, 
or it makes an air attack or a ground attack, we can have a sound play at those exact same times. Okay, so let's start by going into ground attack and I'll click on attack one here and let's add a new behavior. So let's do a new play one shot behavior script. So first I'll take the script in the assets and let's move it into scripts. And then inside of scripts, I'll make sure I move it into the state machine folder as well. Okay, so back on the animator, player attack one, let's go ahead and edit the script. So I'm going to uncomment on state enter, on state update for doing a delayed play, and then on state exit. These other functions we don't need, so I'll get rid of them. So we're going to need a public audio clip sound to play. We want a public flow volume which will default to a full volume of one to play the one shot sound effect with. And then I'm going to port three Booleans. Public bool play on enter equals true, let's say. And then play on exit equals false. Play after delay equals false as well. So those would be the three times we can play the sound effect. And then for when we do do a play after delay, we'll do public float play delay and I'll default that to a quarter of a second. We'll have private float time since entered equals zero. And then once we play a delayed sound effect, I want to have a private Boolean delayed sound played or has delayed sound played, which is false by default. So first off, if we're going to play the sound on enter, so if play on enter, then as soon as we come into this state, which has the script attached to it, we want to do audio source dot play clip at point and we're going to need some parameters for that. So that's going to be sound to play for the position to play the sound at. We'll use the location of the character. So if the character is swinging a sword, it makes sense to play the sound coming from that character's position. So we'll do animator dot game object dot transform dot position. So the position of the animator's game object and then float volume. We'll pass in our parameter from up there at the top. And then that's all we need for that. So I'll just copy paste that to the exit and we'll do play on exit. So that's how you would do play a sound effect on enter and on exit. So then the slightly more tricky bit is when you want to have a delay. So when we enter the state, we definitely want to make sure time since entered is zero since this is the exact time that we entered the state. And we'll just double check and make sure that has sound played is false. It should already be false, but we'll just make sure. And then down here, if we are trying to play after a delay, so if play after delay is true and has delayed sound played is false. So let's add the little exclamation mark there, reversing that. So has delayed sound played, but not true. Then we can increment the timer. So we'll do time since entered plus equals uh, time dot delta time. And then we can do if time since entered is greater than the play delay, then we'll play the sound. So let's just copy this line up here, playing the sound. And then we'll say that has delayed sound played is now true. Okay, and that should be it for our sound player. So now we just use this same script anywhere that we have an animation that needs to play a sound. So we have our attack one here, we need a sound to play the volume and we'll do play on enter, not play after a delay. So let's go to the sound effects that we brought into the project. So sound effects, let's see, attack. So in those sound effects, I think we want battle and slash. We can give that a shot. So I'll just drag the sound clip into the audio clip slot and that should be all we need. I can double click here. So let's go ahead and hit play and see if we can get that sound effect. I can barely hear it, but I think it is here. Um, so what we might realize is that our music is way too loud. So on the music object, I can take the audio source and let's lower the volume. I think in the demo project, I had it as something like 0 0.05. So let's go to audio source down here as well and make it 0 0.05. So now let's go ahead and hit play and start swinging the sword. Okay, yeah, yeah, can hear it now. So now we just need to do the same thing for the other attacks to make sure that they also have a sound. So let's go to animator. I'll add a player one shot behavior to attack two. We can click here to search the project for the sound effects. So I think it was swing or sword or slash. It was slash actually. Okay, so just add it there and then that's done. And let's go to player attack three, add a play one shot. Okay, let's search for slash and that's that. Let's hit play. One, two, three. We have three sound effects that are playing. 
And of course, you can feel free to switch that to a different slash effect if you want the sound to be different for each attack. So let's add in a bunch more sounds to different states in our game. In air attack, I'm going to go to attack one and we'll have it play the slash sound too. So play one shot behavior, slash, go to attack two, play one shot behavior, and we're going to do slash again for all of the characters slashes. Uh, then we should probably have one for play a bow. So this is where we'll have the delay, I think. So add behavior, play one shot behavior, and we'll do play after delay. Let's see if we have a bow sounds. So I'll click on the sounds to play and let's just kind of go through the list. I don't remember exactly which one I was using, but there should be like a fire or something. Uh, maybe I was actually using wind, I think. So the 25 wind sound effect. Let's hit play and test that. So we'll come over here, fire the arrow. And you can see that the sound effect plays after the um, animation actually starts there. So there's a delay to it. Now to get the timing right, we might need to change the delay a little bit. So let's do 0.35. So let's hit play. And now the sound effect plays at a much more accurate time to go along with the arrow being fired. Okay, so that's an example of play after delay. Let's go to the base layer of the player. So player hit, we can add the one shot behavior. I think there is a hit sound effect. So I'll just use that for the player. Player death, let's add a sound effect. So I think there might be a death sound effect, enemy death. Is there one for player? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Okay, so we'll just use the enemy death for the player just for right now. And let's hit play and get hit a bunch of times. Yep. Okay, so there we have the sound effect for the player getting hit from the knight sword. Maybe the knight needs to do more damage. It's taking a while to lose. So I'm actually going to go into the knight enemy. Let's take, let's take the sword attack and I'm gonna make it do 25 damage. Okay, let's hit play and now let's get hit again. So that's one hit, two hits, three hits, sound effect playing each time, and four hits. And there we have our enemy death sound effect playing as well which works all right for the player as well. So all of the sound effects on the player are working pretty nicely. Let's add in sound effects to the knight animator as well. So in the base layer for knight death, let's add a one shot behavior, which of course the sound effect is gonna be enemy death. Knight hit, we will add a play one shot behavior. The sound effect is gonna be hit. For attack, let's add in a one shot behavior. So the sound effect I was using for this, I think, is Ice Explosion. I don't know if it was Ice Explosion, but we'll try that. So let's hit play, and okay, it was. So the attack has nothing to do with actual ice, but I think it works pretty nice for a giant sword swing like that. And then we need to have sounds for the flying enemy. So flying eye, we go to the animator. Let's add in for the death, play sound effect, and we'll do death. Flying eye hit, play one shot behavior, hit sound effect. And in the attack state, let's go to pl flying eye attack, add a sound effect, and let's find a good sound to use here. So it's literally a bite. So let's use the bite sound and let's hit play and kind of test it out. So that's pretty much all working just fine. Might want to take the music and tone it down just a little bit more. So I'll make it 0.04 and then 0.04 down here as well. So let's do one more build and run of our game and then we can give it one final test because we're pretty much done at this point. So there's our maid in Unity. We enter the game, music playing. Let's fire some arrows. Get hit by the enemy. Do some sword swings at them. Let's defeat the knight as well. Get a health pickup. Oh, for the health pickups, we could also add in a play sound when we picked up the health pickup. We'll do that before we wrap up the course. So if you want to add a sound effect for something like a health pickup where there's no animator involved, let's do that really quickly. Adding an audio source to the health pickup prefab. Pick a audio clip. Let's use heal two, and then we need to reference that inside of the health pickup script. So edit script on the health pickup. We'll get the audio source here, audio source. I'll call it pickup source. So on awake, we'll find that audio source. So get component audio source. And then 
if this is not null, then when we come down here to heal uh, the character, let's come down here. If it was healed, then we're going to play the sound effects. Okay, so if the pickup source is not null, normally what we would just do is you would do pickup source dot play. But we have a special circumstance here, which is that we're about to destroy the game object. So if the game object is destroyed, it can't play the sound effect. So what we would actually do is a lot like the play one shot behavior. We can just create a new audio source with audio source play clip at point. And then that won't be destroyed when the game object is destroyed. So let's do audio source dot play clip at point. And we're going to do the pickup source dot clip. The position is going to be, uh, let's say the game object transform position. And the float volume is going to be the pickup source dot volume. So in a sense, we're kind of creating a copy of the audio source at the same position, but outside of the game object. So this way, we'll be able to play the sound effect when the health pickup is picked up and successfully used and destroyed. So let's hit play. Let's get hit. And I'm going to jump up here to play the sound effect. So there's our heal sound. And maybe that's a little bit too much of a magic heal. So we can change the sound effect if we want. Let's see if there's anything else here. Use item. Maybe that's what I was using before. Let's hit play. And let's jump in here. Okay, yeah, that's a little bit more appropriate. So that brings us to pretty much the end of the course. We have just about everything working. Knockbacks for the player, knockbacks for the enemy, the ability to take out the enemy, sound effects, music, pick up items, uh, jumping animations, all that kind of stuff. Enemies that follow waypoint paths, 